sports fans, ASMR Sports, back at you with a experimental new setup here. Um, that is a um, new microphone. That it's pretty similar to the to the ones um, <laughs> to, the, to the ones that I use. Um, actually, the one that I use is right here. For those interested in the kind of recording setup stuff, it's a Rode NT1, and the one that uh, I just showed you out out here is a Rode NT1A, which is a little bit different, but quite similar in the um, you know big picture. But anyway, I wanted to get this microphone um, here. Uh, I got a little stand for it as well because I wanted to start. Um, trying to make videos with more, um, you know, pickup of the noises, um, of, you know, what's in front of me. So what you will be able to hear, hopefully, um, is, you know, uh, much more of the sound from this area. So So uh, previously, when I have the mic just um, by my, you know, mouth picking up vocals, uh, you know, it's it's quite sensitive. The Rode NT1, um, and you know, would pick up a fair amount of the noise, but my voice would always be much more prominent since it's much the mic is much closer. But now, uh, I kind of have the best of both worlds. The mic is you know able to pick up my voice, but um, we'll have very good and prominent sounds from the. Um, from the cards that I'm opening and the stuff in front of me and I kind of got inspired to do this because I was watching like a video um, it was like an eating video and the guy you know like put all the stuff out and you know kind of you know like this on the outer boxes of the packages and kind of open up and you can hear like the crispy you know french fries and stuff and I thought boy that's I feel like that's missing <laughs> from my my video so I will probably, uh, I had to, uh, because I have two microphones, and by the way, these Rode microphones are, um, they're both um, condenser microphones, they use preamps, and they're sort of known for picking up, like, crazy amounts of, of sound from the environment. I, I had to turn off, like, everything in my house, like, you know, an upstairs bathroom fan or, you know, any little thing that's running. I turned off my, um, uh, uh, HVAC system as well, because, um, like, that, that's very loud, and, you know, with two microphones picking up background noise, it, it, it would be sort of insane how noi noisy that would be, so, um, anyways, I, I think people will enjoy this uh, a, a lot, um, and it might inspire me to kind of do different kinds of videos, uh, I'm particularly excited to get to these guys. So Jamar ordered this. As 
asked me to open it and uh, I, I didn't have time to do a video so I kind of had to wait a while to do this and get this out. So apologies for the delay to Jmart, hopefully you appreciate the uh, added um, sound ambience. are exclusive. I actually really like disco prisms. Some people don't really like disco prisms. They're the, basically a bunch of little circles all over. And then here's all the other prisms you can get in here. All basically it's like disco. Um, different colored discos. So I actually really like discos. So it's probably a good product for me. I, I buy um, a lot of like uh, um, the, I don't, I don't know if there's a name for these boxes, but like basically the fast break boxes, which are what they call the, the boxes in, in basketball of prism. And they also do optic fast break sometimes. And basically they're like little kind of square boxes and they have the disco um, prisms in there. And they call those products different things for each sport. Like in baseball, it's quick pitch. And if in football, it's, oh god, what is it? I forgot, something else. But, I might have to get a less squeaky chair for these <laughs> videos too, because I think that's probably the loudest noise. When I turn all the background noise on. Well, um, these new videos, these new sort of recording style videos are definitely going to take longer because I have to move very slow and deliberately. Um, so it's a good thing these uh, hybrid boxes are only four packs and there's six cards per pack. So let's get into it. Uh, hopefully the recording levels of everything I have, you know, I have the headphones on so I can monitor. But anytime you add something new to your setup, it does generally tends to require some um, you know, fine tuning. Like, this dude doesn't know anything about UFC. I'm like, okay, yeah, 
I probably said that ten times in the video, you freaking jerk off. Anyways, I'm not bitter about it, guys, really. <laughs> I'm totally bitter about it. Um, but whatever I get, people don't really remember when I say things, because, uh, you know, it's not like a, I'm a professor um, teaching them things that they have to remember. But anyway, so uh, here's my disclaimer. I don't know anything about UFC. Um, I do know Brock Lesnar is like an all-time legend in UFC. He's one of like the first... Super champs, and he also was like, wasn't he like a, an Olympic champion, or I don't know, we were thinking like a, he was, I feel like he had another career, maybe it was like WWF, maybe it was both of those things, no, it was, yeah, NCAA, so I presume um, he went, he, he was in the Olympics, but maybe not, so that's, that's cool card, it's just a base, um, I'm sure, you know, it's worth a buck or two, but I don't know if these legends are really that valuable, okay, Nikita, Krilov, base. Matt Schnell. Muderji, Sue, rookie card. And uh, now our two, uh, I think there's going to be, so there's four packs and six prisms, so I'm not sure what the distribution will be, but we have got two prisms right here. One is that's Stipe or Steep. Uh, Miocic. That's a, just a, a regular uh, disco prism. You see those little circle, circular designs in there. Kind of very colorful and bubbly. And our blue is Jared Cannonier. Uh, so I'm assuming this is going to be numbered probably to quite low. Number to 49, so pretty cool. Let's see, with knockout wins in three weight classes, Jared, the killer gorilla. Cannoneer is long, displayed one punch power, his bout with Calvin Gastelum at UFC Fight Night. Cannoneer versus Gastelum represented something new, earning a unanimous decision victory. He went 25 minutes for the first time in the octagon. Uh, proving his elite cardio. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I feel like there's not not much more um, demanding physical um, activity than like fighting. Uh, it, you know, I just think of uh, and like when I was I, I haven't seen you know two human beings actually fight each other since um, high school um, and honestly probably most of what I've seen is just like videos of, of kids or you know some jabronis um, street fighting or whatever but like uh, a very common theme of, of, of street fights is that like uh, basically people who are, you know I'm not talking about fights where like you know um, like amateurs or boxing or um, you know trying to do MMA in the backyard but they've done it for like years I'm talking about like two just random people who've never fought before um, fighting like they just get like completely uh, uh, annihilated like um, in terms of uh, you know getting gassed like being tired um, after like you know 30 seconds basically because they're just like trying to throw you know, punches as fast and hard as they can and, and you know, not get murdered and <laughs> that takes a ton of energy. So, uh, I imagine the pros have to really be in incredible shape. in my 
my class, but he was in my year, and we had like three, two or three classes of my grade level. Anyways, for whatever reason, I didn't like him. I don't know why. I think he was just sort of, I, I had the idea, I think, that he was sort of conceited or something. And Anyways, <laughs> it was classic, like, you know, nine-year-old uh, logic. I challenged him to a fight outside and um, after school. I'm, I'm pretty embarrassed by this, actually. It's just, like, ridiculous, but I was nine years old, or I think I might have been, like, eight. I don't know. Um, let's see, fifth grade. Yeah, I, I think I was probably nine. But um, I was a year, sometimes two years younger than everybody else because I started kindergarten, blah, 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 because my birthday is on a weird, like, date that either I started, like, way late or, or kind of early. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I challenged this kid to a fight, and he actually was, like, trying to just go home, and I saw him, so I went up to him, and I said, like, hey, man, are we going to fight or what? He's like, I don't want to fight. I don't think, I think he said, like, I don't want to fight or something, and I was like, no, we're going to fight, and then he, and then he just punched me, <laughs> and I, and I remember just being, like, shocked, like, I didn't know what the, I, you know, I'd never been hit before in my life. I don't think I'd I've ever been hit, at least by a fist, uh, you know, since then, um, and I just was like kind of shocked for like a, a like a couple seconds, and then I just kind of grabbed them, you know, by the by the shirt, and I said, you know, you, you don't ever hit me again, blah blah blah, or I'm gonna murder you or something like that. Whatever a ninth uh, nine year old would say, probably didn't say murder. <laughs> Patty Plimpet, Pimplet, Holly Holm, I recognize her. She was like dominant for quite some time. Uh, she beat. Uh, she was the one who beat. Um, uh, what's her name? God, I can't even remember her name now, but the lady who was, um, like, champ and, and like, kicking butt for years. And she came along and beat her, and then I think maybe relatively quickly after that, um, I meant to say that the lady that she beat was the one who was, like, the champ forever, and then she kind of beat her, but then I don't think it was, like, champ for very long. Anyway, so yeah, I, and then I said, I just said, get out of here to this kid, and that was it. Pretty funny. <laughs> um, uh, what is it? This is, this is like a, um, like not a court side, but a, a, a ring side, I'm sure. No, they call it premier level. Okay, yeah. So select cards, um, all have, all select um, sets have like three classes of card. There's usually like, um, you know, one, two, and three. Um, in basketball, like courtside is the rarest version. Premier level is the second rarest, and then like concourse is the um, is the most common. And so they call them different things in different sports because courtside is not the you know ringside would be the applicable um, name for the most rare um, version of card. Uh, but I don't think I think I've let's see what we've got here. So they don't really. Oh, concourse. Okay, so it's the same as basketball for the commons. I don't think we've gotten any um, of the like rare, most rare kind of card. Yeah, these are all concourse, and this is the first premiere that we've gotten. Royce Gracie. Um, this one is a rookie card. Most most are. Read a little bit about him, showing. Movsar Evloev took a remarkable 15 0 record in 2022. Wow, that's pretty good. I don't know what, what weight class this guy's in. Looks probably pretty, I don't know, is that middleweight? Um, eager to extend that streak against the best of the best in the. Okay, so featherweight, I was going to say maybe he's a little lighter. Um, featherweight division, he was ready to take on all comers. One thing. I know for sure all the top 15 fighters have no idea what they will face, he said. Okay. That's pretty crazy if he's undefeated. Before 2022. Must be pretty good, right? So that might be a nice one. Uh, I'm going to figure out what to sleeve up later. Pack number three.
Rose Nomajunas, one of my favorites. I think I heard she's doing pretty well lately, uh, which is great to hear. Another Patty Pimblet. Rookie card. Oh boy, is this a red? This is a um, red. Uh, um, this is one of the rare, uh, like, you know, courtside. I'm not sure, again, what they call them. Probably ringside would be my guess. Um, so I think this is going to be numbered. Yeah, number two. Uh, 99 is octagon side, is what they call these in UFC. Yeah, year Rodriguez. So that's a pretty sweet card. I gotta say, pretty sweet uh, color coming out of these things. And we got a hit. So let's see. It's an autograph, and it is. Chris Dokus. Rookie card. Very cool. I wonder if that'll be numbered. I'm guessing not, but yeah. So again, um, hits are not guaranteed in this stuff. So if you get one, you're uh, Uh, kind of noise sensory and I have not chewed any gum so let me just uh... well, you know what I've gone this far I'm going to try it without gum I know occasionally I get requests for that and I know most people actually do not prefer that but um, once in a while I like to do a video my next video with this setup will be with gum. And maybe it's best to not have gum for this one just because it's sort of additional sound to, you know, compete with the new microphone setup. So without the gum, we have a kind of a clear um, kind of a view. So this is a concourse patty pimblet. That one must have been a premier patty pimblet. We'll um, put this guy in a top loader. A long time ago, I actually tried this kind of two mic setup, but I the, the microphone that I the second microphone I had back then was pretty horrible. I'm not even sure if I have it anymore. I don't know.
sounds will be of interest. Look like this. How loud this is going to be if I have this right here. Okay. <laughs> what the heck? I know it's probably not. Okay, not good. This one is. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's numbered to 49, so, but I don't see many of his cards that are worth a ton. There's an autograph numbered to 10 for 37 bucks, so I don't know, maybe this is a $10 card, $5 card, something. Let's try Yair. So this card um, sold on August 10th, which was, when was that, uh, eight days ago for $29.99, Disco Prism Auto, exact card sold, so got a nice relevant comp, so $30 card right there. Um, maybe look up some of the rookies.